Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bethlehem United Methodist Church. It's a joy to have you with us, as always. A few announcements before we begin our exciting morning of worship with the choir and the cantata. Woohoo! Just saying. Uh, if you could please sign in, there are clipboards uh, at the end of your pew in the center. We'd love to have you sign in. Let us know that you have been here. And I feel really echoey. Um, some other announcements. You may have noticed some of the photos flashing by as you were coming in. I want to say huge kudos and thank you, church. You came out in a big way. It was wonderful to support our Getting Ahead graduates on Wednesday. Thank you, Rusty and Carol McMullen, for leading the class. Awesome facilitator. Clearly, uh, yes. Clearly, lives have been changed. And... Um, community was built in a powerful way. I'm so grateful for the stories and uh, Rusty for your leadership. Thank you so much. Uh, this week we have some other things happening on Tuesday night at Kaleidoscope, which is an outreach facility that we use. There is a women's cancer support group. They're meeting at six o'clock Tuesday night. Uh, the address is 2500 Hardy Road. It's there in your bulletin. If you know someone, a woman who has uh, struggled with cancer, is struggling now, or has in the past. It's a wonderful group of ladies, and they are uh, quickly connecting to build community among themselves. So it's a wonderful group. Also, later this week on Friday, if you want to come see the cutest thing ever, just about, uh, Friday at 11 o'clock, the preschool is going to have their pageant here. I know we're going to do it on Sunday at 11 with a lot of our kids. Our kids are a little older. Uh, but on Friday, all the little preschoolers are going to come here. So everybody's welcome if you want to come cheer on the preschool and enjoy hearing the story of Christ's birth. Uh, that's Friday at 11. And then Sunday, December 17th, as I mentioned, we'll have our pageant here at 11. Uh, if you want a service with a sermon, that would be 8.30 or at, yes, or at the bridge, which is 9.45, but at 11 Rather than a sermon, we'll be having our impromptu uh, pageant. And just warning you, I'm always recruiting. If we need an extra person or two, I might tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, we need one more shepherd. So I know everybody sits on this side. If you want to hide, you might want to sit on the... No, I didn't say that, did I? But anyway, it's a lot of fun. So you could just come and spend the morning here. There's something all morning long that's unique and fun. Uh, great ways to worship. Also, next Sunday is the last opportunity to sign up for Glorious Gifts. Glorious Gifts is a ministry that we have that enables all of us to participate by giving donations to local charities in honor of someone that we love or care about or want to, to make a special gift for them. So you can fill out this form to multiple, you know, if you want to do three cards for three different people and give... I'm giving science experiments in honor of my uh, daughter and son-in-law who have little preschoolers. So I'm going to do science experience for the preschool. And I get a little card that says, hey, I donated for science experience experiments. I'm having trouble there. In your honor. And so then I can give that card to my family member. So that's how it works. You make a donation here to support. There's 12 different charities. And then you'll get cards that you can give to the person that you want to honor. So just a way for us, again, to support our local charities and be mindful of our community. Whew, that's a lot, but it's exciting. Make sure before you leave, you get the little, uh, little card that has all the other things that are happening. We have Christmas Eve services. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm happy. <laughs> and we have the longest night on December 21st. We have a special service here at 7 o'clock for people who have experienced loss and struggle during this time of year. So something for everyone. But as we begin our time of worship, I'm going to invite you, as you are able, to first stand. We're going to stand and sing a choral call to worship as we open our time together. <laughs>
seated. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. As we light these two candles of hope and peace, we acknowledge the Prince of Peace who brings tranquility to our restless hearts. May the light and peace guide our steps in each path of our righteousness. to invite any children to come forward for our children's time. happy to have all of you here with us this morning. Today, you can look at me if you want to, if you don't want to look out there at all the people, it's okay. But y'all are beautiful, no offense to any of you. But we're so excited to have you here this morning and to have you here with in worship. And we're going to hear lots of beautiful songs and we're going to worship God this morning in song. We're going to hear all of the people in the choir sing and hear the piano and the organ and it's going to be beautiful. They're going to paint a picture with their voices and with their instruments and we're so excited. And next Sunday is an exciting Sunday too. Do you know what the word spontaneous means? Kind of like this. Yeah, spontaneous. Spontaneous is when something happens out of the blue and you don't really prepare for it. So next week, we're having a spontaneous Christmas pageant. So that means you just come and you show up and you pick what you want to be and you get to be in the Christmas pageant with no rehearsal. You could be Mary, you could be an angel. You want to be an angel? Yeah. You don't have to do any rehearsals. You just grab a costume and you jump right in. And it's lots of fun. Not today. Next Sunday. So I hope you'll be here to join us because we always love telling the story of Jesus' birth with our children. Good morning. Yeah. All right. We're going to say a prayer, okay? You ready? You want to pray with me? Can you repeat after me? Pray. Say, Dear God, we thank you for music and the joy of worshiping you. Amen. Okay, thank you, friends.
Let's pray together. Loving God, uh, we're so grateful that you have sent Jesus, who is Emmanuel, who is God with us. Thank you that you are not a God who is distant and uninvolved in the world, but it is your choice to bend close to us so that we can see your face in the person of your son, Jesus. As we move through these weeks of Advent and prepare to celebrate his birth, remind us of the expectant hope of his coming again when his kingdom will reign and will come in all of its fullness, when there will be peace with justice and the ways that are crooked will be made straight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, Lord, we are so grateful for the gift of music for our musicians who have prepared this wonderful cantata uh, that has been shared with our community and our congregation. Uh, thank you that we are able to hear and to sing and to say uh, what this relationship with you through Jesus means to us, particularly the gift of hope that comes through him. We're grateful for all the outreach uh, experiences that we continue to offer. Be with all the volunteers who will be a part of a child's Christmas as many, many children are um, <coughs> presents are prepared and ready to be distributed next Saturday. Uh, we pray that this will be a joyous time, particularly for families in need. We're also grateful for our Getting Ahead graduates for this new path that they have been able to to take. We pray your blessing upon them as they uh, seek to move in a fuller uh, direction. Lord, in your mercy, pray. we are reminded during this holy season that Jesus came to be our Prince of Peace. We are aware of communities and nations where there is not peace. Uh, we particularly lift up the war in Gaza and Israel we know that still there are many lives being lost. Um, there is much heartache to be shared on both sides. Um, we pray for a resolution uh, to this conflict. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're grateful, Lord, for the ongoing teaching ministry of your son, Jesus, and we remember how he has asked us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hope, a feeling of expectation, a desire for a certain thing to happen, a notion that what is wanted can be had and that events will turn out for the best. Hope has always lifted the human heart. In the Old Testament times, the beleaguered hoped for deliverance, the sick hoped for healing, and the Israelites hoped for freedom in a new and peaceful world. But during one moment in time, over 2,000 years ago, hope took on new meaning. And today we celebrate that moment when hope came as a gift from God. That gift brought with it the beginning of a new kind of hope, that the world could be set right, that peace would overcome strife, and that all people could receive the greatest gift imaginable, the gift of eternal life. Hope is ours to claim because of that one glorious moment when in a stable in Bethlehem, a baby was born.
hope is timeless. It filled the hearts of the great figures of the Old Testament. Moses hoped that he could deliver the Israelites. Noah hoped that his ark would save his precious cargo. David put his hope in a single stone to bring down a giant. But it was a young girl named Mary who became the very symbol of hope, for she was told that she would not only bear a son, but a savior, the hope of the whole world, Emmanuel. him in swaddling clothes and placed him in a manger in a stable 
because there was no other place she and Joseph could find to spend the night. Mary knew her baby was the promised Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. But the rest of the world, well, they had yet to learn. like a tiny spark that can ignite a flame. A flame that can spread far and wide, ultimately filling a darkened world with light. 
the first spark of a brand new hope occurred when an angel of the Lord appeared to a group of shepherds who were tending their flocks. The angel said to them, Fear not, for I bring good news this very night. The Savior has been born in the town of Bethlehem. And suddenly, a great host of angels appeared, singing glory to God in the highest. something much greater, not just optimism, but a thrill of hope, true hope, for the permanent end of darkness and for real peace, the hope of an expectant world 
was fulfilled in Bethlehem on that wondrous holy night. Christmas, hope came in the form of a promise that God's love and grace is ours forever. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, 
plans to give you hope and a future. Soft as the voice of an angel, breathing a lesson unheard. Hope, with a gentle persuasion, whispers her comforting words. Whispering hope, oh, how welcome thy voice, making my heart in its sorrows rejoice.
Yeah, well said. Um, hey, fourth time doing this amazing cantata. Do it again right the next time. Okay. I think this was the last. I'm going to miss this cantata. Um, thank you so much for this offering that uh, you presented to God and that we have been able to join in. I, I just feel like there's something about the heart of the message of Christmas that's really been touched deeply by your work. So, so we are so grateful, of course. Uh, thank you, Robbie, for your musical leadership, and Robin, and thank you, Matt, for being narrator. I guess one more round of applause.
So, uh, friends, we definitely proclaim at Christmas time throughout the year the generosity of God who chose to offer himself in the form of an infant, very vulnerable. The circumstances around Jesus' birth were not ideal uh, by any measure, but poured forth by a loving God. In response, we now have the opportunity to continue to uh, deepen our generosity so that the message that we proclaim touch, touches hearts and lives and leads to transform people. So we want to express gratitude for the gifts given online for these gifts that will uh, land in our offering plate today as well. So I invite our host to come forward as we celebrate our time of offering.
Loving God, it is with grateful hearts that we present these gifts and we present ourselves. We know that apart from you, we can do nothing. We know that when we are in relationship with you, amazing things happen to ordinary people. So thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus, his transforming grace, which is about the work of changing this world. And thank you for these gifts and those that are given online. May they help fuel the growth of the kingdom of your son, Jesus, that more and more people and communities and nations and the entire world would be filled with the gift of your hope. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Friends, uh, you may now be seated. Uh, I want to call Nina Beth and Hal Thornton forward as they are joining today. Susan Hughes, our assistant pastor, and Laurel and Chuck Reif, uh, who will be doing the introductions today, and Susan Tensley, who is our lay leader. How about if we have you, you all in the middle, however you want to do this? <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Laurel and I uh, feel very privileged to present to you Nina Beth and Hal as they commit themselves on this second Sunday of Advent uh, to the Bethlehem United Methodist Church. And this is a little introduction. Hal was born in Durham, North Carolina, but lived all over Virginia as the son of a Methodist minister. Currently, he is president of Davenport Energy. Nina Beth is a native of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I was, when I met her, she said Rocky Mount, and I said, oh, you're right here, no, North Carolina, <laughs> where she grew up attending First Baptist Church of Rocky Mount. She had many years of administrative and financial experience before retiring. She enjoys kayaking and most anything crafts related. After Hal and Nina Beth married, they lived in Chatham, Virginia, and were members of Watson Memorial United Methodist Church. Eight years ago, they moved to Panhook. They have two children, a daughter who lives in Charlottesville with her husband and two little boys, and a son who lives in Mid Midlothian, I knew I'd mess that up, with his wife and two boys. They are looking forward to Bethlehem becoming their new church home, and we are very happy about that as well. Hal and Nina Beth come to us by way of Watson, United Methodist Church in Chatham, and we welcome you to our church family. And you know, there's something very special about coming to Bethlehem at Christmas. So we welcome you. Uh, Hal and Nina Beth, I really appreciate this opportunity uh, to work together with you as we've had our new member classes and uh, that you've jumped right in. We're so grateful that you are becoming a part of the Bethlehem faith community. Um, we have one question for you, and that is, will you support the ministries of Bethlehem United Methodist Church with your prayers, presence, gift service, and witness? If so, please say, I will. And friends, we have uh, something, a response for us to make uh, together. Um, in, here we go. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in your Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our liberty of heaven and glory God through Jesus Christ. Friends, let's welcome our newest members here at Bethlehem. <laughs> Thank you, so you guys are here. So I'm going to uh, invite uh, Billie Jean and 
Kurt Elmer to come forward, and also Megan Mitchell. As we uh, participate, would y'all like to stand in the middle here? Is that good? Okay, great plan. Uh, as we participate in an order of farewell for you guys, so we're going to start with comments by Megan. I had to take a half a bulletin to write down all the things that the two of you have been active in over the years here at Bethlehem. Um, we love you so much, Kurt and Billie Jean and your alter ego, Mrs. Elmer. Um, we have been blessed to have you here active in our preschool as a lead teacher for our pre-K for eight years before your retirement. and. Um, you have touched countless lives of all ages here at Bethlehem, from our college students and our higher education to our itty bitties that are in preschool, and um, some of those we have here today who had you as teachers, and uh, we're just so thankful for the lasting impact in the ministry that, that you have had here. Kurt, we thank you for keeping us safe and checking our smoke detectors and our fire extinguishers for years here for the preschool. Uh, some of the things that you have been active in, choir and bells that we see today, um, Sunday morning IT running the, the screens for us in early service, higher education, preschool. Uh, for the last two years since I took over preschool, you told me that if I was going to take over the preschool that you would help with youth group so that um, you could share some of that weight that I was taking on and you've been a blessing in our youth group to be an assistant and to also be a leader on days that I couldn't be there and your absence is felt and you will be missed but you're very much loved and in children's ministry so we're so thankful for the many lives that you both have touched and have been a part of here at Bethlehem and we know that you will do the same at Blacksburg United Methodist and we wish you blessings in your future. Uh, Billy Jean, I, I want to say as I uh, came to be pastor of Bethlehem, it was great to meet everyone, but you uh, knew my Uncle Pete. You had been to our farm, the annual pig roast for soil and water conservation, and I bragged about the number of extension agents here, uh, retired uh, with my family. I haven't always been in settings where there was any extension agent anywhere nearby. So uh, we are so grateful for uh, Kurt and Billy Jean for all of your work here. And as you know, as United Methodists, when we turn to our book of worship, there's a ritual for everything. <laughs> so we are going to start with these words. The church is a family united by the common recognition of Jesus Christ as our Savior. We are all brothers and sisters, and for a time, Bethlehem is our home. Like every human family, our church family is formed and reformed over time. As members are born, as they die, as members are adopted into our family, as they leave our congregation for a new home in a different place. For a time, Billy Jean and Kurt have lived with us. We have shared with each other good times and bad. We have shared each other's joys and sorrows. We have lightened each other's heavy loads. Together we have laughed and cried. Together we have worshiped and praised God. Together we have lived. In congregation, we have uh, this, uh, these words of response. We feel sorrow in believing that we rejoice with you in anticipation of this new phase of your life. We will miss your love and support. Yet we know you will add much to the lives of those who will be your new church family, as you have added much to our lives. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the strength and the protector of your people. We humbly place in your hands, Billy Jean and Kurt, of this congregation who are about to leave us. Keep and preserve them, O oh Lord, in all health and safety, both of mind and body, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. We want to express our appreciation for everything you all have done. So let's uh, stand and sing our final hymn.
Now, friends, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of his steadfast love. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon each of us today and always. Amen. Amen.